Mercedes-Benz is producing systems for the world market. With the intelligent world drive, we wanted to catch data, to get information from all those markets, to see where the system still needs improvements. And that's why the intelligent world drive is so important for Mercedes-Benz. We have been using map data for quite a while and we have made new enhancements in the last S-Class where we have our curve adaptation and, and dystronic speed adaptations according to map data. We have captured from thousands of kilometers um, many hundreds of situations that uh, now are in the middle of analysis. Um, what the engineers now do is looking at the data so where the system still needs some enhancements and bringing this back into the algorithms. And uh, we are pretty happy that we found so many typical situations worldwide that now help us adapt our systems. For example, in China, very dense traffic. Cars really get in front of you very late and sometimes very aggressive. In Australia, we have seen the, the hook turn, a very typical scenario where you first take left before you finally make your right turn. In Los Angeles, full highways, five lanes. All those scenarios were important to get that our system at the end of the day is really able to drive everywhere. With our international footprint, we are on a good way. And of course, we want to enhance the work that we do on a worldwide basis. It's the war for talents on the one hand side, and it's uh, the closeness to markets on the other hand side. So we're going to improve our footprint in the future. As of today, Mercedes-Benz has the most advanced driver assistance systems on the market where the driver still is in responsibility. The next step is going to be level 3, 4 and 5 systems when the driver then is taken out of the loop and the car is taking more and more responsibility uh, from the driver. We are working on those systems in two big projects and our plan is to launch systems for serious production in the years 20 and 21. Concerning the regulations, we have different things to do. Um, first, we have the Vienna Convention that still needs to be uh, um, changed, that the national regulations can allow automated driving. And then many, many national regulations uh, really have to be adapted that fully autonomous driving really can be introduced into the markets.